All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, who says in his glorious book, God wants ease for you, not hardship. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and that our master Prophet Muhammad is his votary and messenger, who said, I have been sent with easy and pure monotheism. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his household, companions, and upon those who follow him to the day of judgment. It goes without saying that the manifestations of greatness of the Islamic Sharia are very numerous. On top of these comes moderation and facilitation in their purest meanings. Thus, in the Sharia, one finds no hardship, strictness, or difficulty. These great features should not be questioned due to the acts of some extremists who think that religiousness requires adopting strictness in practicing Islam. And thus, they have introduced extremists approaches that attract many people under the slogan of religiousness and precaution. Uh, it is as if their slogan is much extremism means much religiousness and piety to Allah. This only proves that they are ignorant of the greatness of this religion, its moderation and kindness. As the Almighty Allah says, and they placed no hardship in you in religion. The faith of your forefather Abraham Allah has called you Muslims both in the past and in this message so that the messenger can bear witness about you and so that you can bear witness about other people. And our Prophet peace be upon him said, this religion is easy and no one will ever overburden himself in religion except that it will overcome him. So follow a middle course. If you can do this, do something near to it and give glad tidings and gain strength by worshiping in Allah in the mornings, afternoons, and during the last hours of the night. What a great statement by Sufyan al thawri when he said, knowledge for us means knowledge of the concession stated by a trustworthy scholar. As for strictness, anyone can show strictness. Tolerance in the Islamic Sharia is not a word to be said or a slogan just to be raised, but it is a divine approach and one of the principles that the Almighty Allah treats his servants with and orders us to promote among ourselves. He the Exalted said, God does not burden any soul with more than it can bear. And he said, Allah wants ease for you, not hardship. Also, Allah Most High said, Allah wishes to lighten your burden. Man was created weak. And in the clearest verse to show Allah's forgiveness, the glorious Quran says, Say, my servants who have harmed themselves by their own excess, do not despair of God's mercy. God forgives all sins. He is truly the most forgiving, the most merciful. And Allah also says, your Lord is the most forgiving and full of mercy. And in another verse, Allah says, Unless they repent, make amends, and declare the truth, I will certainly accept their repentance. I am the ever-relenting, the most merciful. Abu Huraira narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, When Allah created the creation, he wrote on his throne, My mercy has preceded my anger. And in a Qudsi hadith, Allah says, O son of Adam, I forgive you as long as you pray to me and hope for for my forgiveness, whatever sins you have committed. O son of Adam, I don't care if your sins reach the height of the heaven. Then you ask for for my forgiveness, I would forgive you. O son of Adam, if you come to me with an earth load of sins, and meet me associating nothing to me, I would match it with an earth load of forgiveness. The Almighty Allah has called his servants to pardon and forgive others in many occasions in his glorious Quran. For example, Allah says, good and evil cannot be equal. Prophet, repel evil with what is better and your enemy will become as close as an old and valued friend. He also says, let them burden and forgive. Do you not wish that Allah should forgive you? Allah is the most forgiving and merciful. 
There's no doubt that when reviewing the life of the Prophet peace be upon him, we become certain that he was the best example of tolerance and facilitation. In this regard, Aisha said, whenever the Prophet peace be upon him was given an option between two things, he used to select the easier of the two as long as it was not sinful. But if it was sinful, he would remain far from it. By Allah, he never took revenge for himself concerning any matter that was presented to him. But when Allah's limits were transgressed, he would take, he would take revenge for Allah's sake. Let's now review some examples of the Prophet's life in calling to Allah with wisdom and good admonition. Anas ibn Malik narrated, I was with the Prophet peace be upon him when a man came and said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I have committed a sin liable of an ordained punishment, so execute the punishment on me. The Messenger of Allah did not ask him about it, and then came the time of prayers. So he performed prayers with the Messenger of Allah. When the Messenger of Allah finished prayer, the man stood up and said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I have committed a sin, so execute the ordinance of Allah upon me. The Prophet, peace be upon him, asked, Have you performed prayer with us? Yes, he replied. The Messenger of Allah said, Verily, Allah has forgiven you. And Abu Huraira said, A Bedouin urinated in the mosque, and some people rushed to beat him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Leave him alone, and pour a bucket of water over it. You have been sent to make things easy and to make them not to make them difficult. Muawiyah ibn al-Hakam, may Allah be pleased with him, reported, I was praying with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. A man in the company sneezed, and I said, May Allah have mercy on you. The people gave me disapproving looks. When I saw them urging me to remain silent, I became angry but restrained myself. When the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, concluded his prayer, he neither rebuked me, nor beat me, nor abused me. He simply said, it is not permissible to talk during prayer, because it is just for glorifying Allah, and declaring, declaring his greatness, as, was, as well as the recitation of the Quran. If we carefully examine the book of our Lord, glory be to him, and the sunnah of our Prophet, peace be upon him, we will certainly find different kinds of tolerance, easiness, and forbearance that totally eliminate any form of extremism and violence from which our world suffers today. For example, as far as creed is concerned, we find that Islam did not force anyone to embrace it. On the contrary, it guarantees freedom of belief for everyone. Allah Most High says, there shall be no compulsion in religion, and if your Lord had pleased, surely all those who are in the earth would have believed, all of them. Will you then force men till they become believers? As, as for acts of worship, the Prophet, peace be upon him, called for easiness, facilitation, and keeping away from fanaticism. The Prophet is reported to have said, All people, some of you make others dislike the prayer. So whoever becomes an imam, he should shorten the prayer, as behind them are the weak, the old, and the needy. Also, when some people complain to him, to the Prophet, that Mu'adh, may Allah be pleased with him, prolong the prayer, the Prophet instructed him, saying, Do you want to cause hardship to the people, O Mu'adh? Do you want to cause hardship to the people? Why don't you recite, glorify the name of your Lord, the Most High, and by the sun and its brightness, and the like, of short surahs. In Anas ibn Malik, may, be, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated, Once the Prophet, peace be upon him, entered the mosque and saw people hanging a rope in between two pillars. He said, What is this rope for? He said, the people said, this rope is for Zainab, who, when she feels tired, holds it to keep standing for the prayer. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, do not use it. Remove the rope. You should pray as long as you feel active. And when you get tired, just sit down. Furthermore, 
Jabir ibn Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him, said, We set out on a journey. One of our people was hurt by a stone that injured his head. He then had a wet dream. He asked his fellow travelers, Do you find a concession for me to perform tayammum or dry ablution? They said, We do not find any concession for you, while you can use water. He took a bath and died. When he came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, the incident was reported to the Prophet. He said, They killed him. May Allah kill them. Could they not ask when they didn't know? The cure for ignorance is inquiry. It was enough for him to perform tayammum and to pour some drops of water or bind a bandage over his wound. The narrator was doubtful. Then he should have wiped over it and washed the rest of his body. Also, when Umran ibn Husayn, may Allah be pleased with him, suffered from fistula, the Prophet instructed him and said, Perform prayer standing. If you cannot, then setting. If you cannot, then while lying on your side. In truth, the Prophet, peace be upon him, is a practical personification of tolerance. So, we had the brilliant image that as a witness to the greatness of Islam. For instance, he said about prayer, the greatest of the religion's rituals. When I start the prayer, I intend to prolong it. But on hearing the cries of a child, I cut it short because I know that the cries of, a, of, a, of the child will incite its mother's passions. As far as transac transactions are concerned, the Islamic Sharia recommended tolerance, easiness, and alleviating the hard ships of people in selling, buying, and asking for due debts. Allah the Almighty says, All you who believe, do not devour your property among yourselves falsely, except that it be trading by your mutual consent, and do not kill your people. Surely Allah is merciful to you. And if the debtor is in straightness, then let there be postponement until he is in ease and then that you remit it as alms is better for you if you know. Our Prophet also said, may Allah have mercy on a person who is lenient when he sells, lenient when he buys, and lenient when he asks for payment. Being tolerant in selling means that the seller shall not be a miser who takes too much profit and who monopolizes his commodity and who defrauds the weight. While turns, turbulence is in buying means that the buyer be easy with the seller and that he does not diminish things to people. The Prophet, peace be upon him, told that tolerance in transactions is a cause for attaining safety in the hereafter. He said, a man was admitted into paradise because he showed tolerance at time of selling and buying. He also said, a man from among those who were before you was called to account. Nothing in the way of good was found for him except that he used to have dealings with people and being well to do. He would order his servants to let off the man in straightened circumstances. That's from repaying his debt. The Prophet peace be upon him then said, Allah said, we are worthier than you of that, that is, of being so generous. Let him off. Furthermore, the Prophet, when telling about some scenes of the day of resurrection, he said, Allah Most High would say to the angels, Look in the fire. Do you find anyone who did good deeds? The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, They looked in the fire and actually found a man to whom it will be said, Have you ever done a good deed? The man would reply, no, but I used to show tolerance in selling, and whereupon Allah Most High would say, Show my servant tolerance as he showed tolerance to my servants. With that said, I ask Allah for forgiveness for me and for you. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds. I bear witness that there is no God deserving to be worshipped but Allah. And I bear witness that our Master, Prophet Muhammad, is his leader and messenger. 
May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his family, companions, and whoever follows their guidance till, till the day of judgment. Muslim brothers, the principle of to tolerance in Islam is not restricted to the point of Muslims dealing with one another, but rather it is a comprehensive way of life that covers all people. Our Lord, glory be to him, ordered his belie believing votaries to deal kindly with all human beings, as he said, and you shall speak good to people, and Allah does not forbid you respecting those who have not made war against you on account of your religion, and have not driven you forth from your homes, that you show them kindness and deal with them justly. Surely Allah loves the doors of justice. A sheep was once slaughtered for Abdullah ibn Umar when he asked his slave, have you given any to, your, to our Jewish neighbor? Have you given any to our Jewish neighbor? I heard the messenger of Allah, <coughs> peace be upon him, saying, Jebel kept on recommending that I treat my neighbors well until I thought that he would order me to treat them as my ears. Imam al shafii may Allah have mercy on him, wrote, wrote some lines of poetry where he said, Conceal yourselves with generosity, for everything is by generosity concealed. Do not show humiliation to the enemies, for the enemies' mockery is affliction. Do not expect a miser uh, expect a miser to show tolerance, for a thirsty will not find water in the fire. O oh Allah, grant us the correct understanding of our religion. Guide us to the right path and use us as guides and make us a means for others' guidance.